Hi there. For generations, many people have found some sort of pen knife uh, a useful item for routine tasks in the garden, the workplace or the home. Back in my youth, even uh, young boys would carry some sort of pen knife, small pen knife, be in their pocket and they could use it for peeling an apple, for cutting twine, making catapults, doing all sorts of things. And similarly, adults would carry probably a more expensive version and use that. Uh, but uh, useful as those items were, um, they could be improved and the areas that needed improvement were the method of carriage rather than a pocket having to dig into a pocket for something uh, if you need it quickly uh, opening which was usually a two-handed um, um, two-handed task and um, being able to um, cut very very well sharpening so uh, typical uh, knives of the time uh, were not really useful for self-defense even though uh, W.E. Fairbairn taught the use of the military jackknife for gralicking which is opening someone up um, fr fr uh, from the pubic bone right up to the solar plexus um, but that was rather an arcane technique In, a, in the 1970s, um, a line of very high quality folding knives made of really good steel came out of Seki, Japan. And um, they really didn't have much improvement o over a regular clasp knife. Um, however, a device called a flicket was devised and on sale in America. I sent for one and I fitted it to my Seki knife, which I bought in our local gun store. Now the flick had worked fine for opening the knife, but there was still the problem of um, carriage and access. And then uh, Sal Glesser, who had made um, a couple of um, innovations, one was a clamp to hold uh, tools sort of as a third hand for fine work and the second was um, a, a sharpening system and it was particularly use, useful for sharpening uh, serrated edges and he decided to um, offer knives with serrated edges which would make use of his sharpening system and he added some other innovations and created really what is now the modern tactical folding knife and primarily amongst of his inventions in this field really was he invented the hole. The hole um, solved the problem of single hand opening of the knife by introducing the hump on the back of the blade with the hole which allowed the thumb to um, secure a position within the hole and by leverage swing the blade open with one hand. Uh, the other thing he did was to add a clip to the side of the knife so you could um, insert it on your, either on your belt or within the waistband and these two things together produced the knife which became known as the clip it. And the first model of, of, of um, this design was the um, CO1, the worker. Now this worked very, very well. Um, <clears throat> if you've never handled uh, a clip it design, you might think that the clip gets in the way of your grip. In fact, it's the opposite. It helps to secure the grip and that adds um, gripping factors to the hold on the knife and <clears throat> I first um, was introduced to Spyderco's 
um, when I was training with Colonel Kuba, he came over in 1988, had already trained with him in 78 or 79 at Bisley, um, and he came over and did an advanced program. Um, and at a dinner afterwards, he was discussing the Spyderco, which he had um, found very useful. And he said, I'm always being asked um, how long they last uh, between resharpenings. He said, and I can never tell anyone, he said, because I always find I'm giving them away as presents when he's hosted in various places, when he used to go hunting in Africa and so on. And he'd give away uh, his, his spider corn knife as a present and they were always very, very um, much desired by um, the people who received them. Then, uh, a little bit later that year, um, we presented a bodyguard course in Detroit, uh, United States, and Evan Marshall uh, had um, a spider co, and I was able to use it, evaluate it, play with it, and we actually used it um, to try to defeat the security uh, in the bodyguard exercise. I was playing a bad guy and I had to try and smuggle a knife in um, to attack the VIP. And uh, we found the um, the worker uh, a really interesting design for that. Uh, after playing with this knife in Detroit, uh, I decided I wanted one. And Terry O'Neill and myself made the trip to Blackburn to a company called Framearm who were the stockists for Spyderco at the time. And um, we actually ended up spending quite uh, a time in the shop looking at different knives and so on. And um, it was one of the few dedicated knife shops in, in the country. And um, we both ended up buying um, Spydercos. Terry selected the police model, which was a little bit bigger and had a point, a very decisive point. And I went for the Mariner, which was um, a variation on the original worker, but it had um, more of a sheep's foot um, end to the blade. Uh, it didn't have a, a point, and it uh, appealed to me because I mainly wanted to use it for range work. I, I thought it would be very, very useful um, working on the range, presenting um, firearms courses and so on. Uh, a knife can be a very, very useful item and, and the uh, Spyderco, particularly with this one hand capability, which allows you to hold an object in one hand while you cut it in the other, um, or to hold on to something. So um, Terry was thinking more on the self-protection side. He wanted a, one with the um, point on it. And um, so both good choices. Um, both task orientated. Um, I would also just make a little point about names. Um, police model, law enforcement, nothing to object to there. Mariner, working knife, obviously, um, stainless steel, uh, uh, maritime environment, again, nothing to um, object to. Uh, whereas some of the knives that being talked about at the moment, as I'm making this, the government is still talking about banning zombie knives, and they've all got really you know, names like Dragon Slayer and things like this. Um, <clears throat> I would suggest that names like that do not really help uh, the image of the knife. So um, we both uh, made our choices and um, I still have the Marin and um, I'll, I'll talk about it just now. Uh, after playing with this knife in Detroit, uh, I decided I wanted one and Terry O'Neill and myself made the trip to Blackburn to a company called Framearm, who were the stockists for Spyderco at the time. And um, we actually ended up spending quite uh, a time in the shop looking at different knives and so on. And um, 
it was one of the few dedicated knife shops in in the country and um, we both ended up buying um, Spydercos. Terry selected the police model which was a little bit bigger and had a point a very decisive point and I went for the Mariner which was um, a variation on the original worker but it had um, more of a sheep's foot um, end to the blade uh, it didn't have a, a point and it uh, appealed to me because I mainly wanted to use it for range work I, I thought it would be very very useful um, working on the range presenting um, firearms courses and so on uh, a knife can be a very very useful item and, and the uh, spiderco particularly with this one hand capability which allows you to hold an object in one hand while you cut it in the other um, or to hold on to something so um, Terry was thinking more on the self-protection side he wanted a one with the um, point on it and um, so both good choices um, both task orientated um, I would also just make a little point about names um, police model law enforcement nothing to object to there mariner working knife obviously um, stainless steel uh, uh, maritime environment again nothing to um, object to uh, whereas some of the knives that are being talked about at the moment uh, as I'm making this the government is still talking about banning zombie knives and they've all got really you know names like dragon slayer and things like this um, <clears throat> I would suggest that names like that do not really help uh, the image of the knife so um, we both uh, made our choices and um, I still have the Marin and um, I'll, I'll talk about it just now. I'll now discuss the ways of opening the Spyderco. There's several ways and uh, I'll go through them one by one. I'll stand up so I can bring the knife into the more into the eye line. So the way that's first, the most obvious way, is to use the thumb in the thumb hole. And many people do this by moving the thumb in a circular action like so. This isn't actually very efficient using quite small muscles. It's much better to run your thumb forward in a straight line. The knife opens much more positively. We can then also, using the ring finger, open the knife to a reverse grip. We then have the unique spidey drop where the knife is pinched between thumb and forefinger through the thumb hole and we just drop it down. I'll do that again as I went out of camera shop holding it here and just using the weight of the handle to open the knife we then have inertial openings and we use a wrist flick to get the blade open you can also do it to reverse grip Now, if you can do those inertial openings with a rocker lock knife, which is using this lock here, which is in constant pressure against the blade, if you can master that, if you then use a liner lock knife like this one, then opening, using an inertial opening, is so easy. Just a very small flick. I'll do it from the other direction as well and it's open so there you have different ways there are others there's the anchor points and similar techniques which I'll probably demonstrate at some time using other knives uh, as we get to them
So the utility of the um, tactical folding knife, uh, at one time it was widely touted as being um, useful for self-protection. The problem with that is access, particularly in fight access. It's um, quite a, a coordination intensive action in a high stress situation. And, and myself and several other people have gone more to a, a compact fixed blade for a self, self protection um, application rather than the tactical folder. However, the tactical folder is still a very useful knife for many, many uh, applications. Um, I've done a, a review of the Spyderco Rescue, which is kind of um, several generations away from the Mariner uh, with lots of little additions to it. And <clears throat> that's been my fav favorite knife for the past couple of years, uh, whenever I've been uh, overseas and, and um, in places where it's legal to carry. Uh, a knife so uh, the tactical fold is still very very useful compact fixed blade for self-protection so I, I do know people who carry multiple knives there's a chap uh, who's been on many of our courses and his his work he works out in the uh, heavily uh, rural areas he's climbing a lot uh, repairing things and uh, he has to have knives on both sides of his body. He can hold them with one hand, need to access um, or the other. And it's purely work related and he finds the tactical folders um, very, very useful. So that simply uh, is an overview of the tactical folder, where it came from and my particular first tactical folder the mariner uh, in this series we'll be looking at other knives that i've favored since then but it still has a very very special place in my uh, armory and my collection and as i say it's something that uh, i have access to every day in the house and it's proved very very useful and uh, an investment it wasn't particularly cheap when i bought it from framework um, but over the years, the investments paid off and uh, I, I found it to be uh, a very sturdy, very reliable. It still locks up like a safe um, and it, it really put me on the path of appreciating.